I had a friend recently that I made some soup bowl cozies for, and they liked them so much that they commissioned me to make a bunch more. One thing I did was I used my baby lock coronet to practice my long arming skills on these, and that was really cool. So I'm gonna give you this just super easy tutorial how to make a little soup bowl cozy, but the cool part, let's see if you can get that. Yay! I got to practice my long arming. So, you know, practice them. So I'm really excited about this because this was a super easy, super fun way to get to know my machine, to kind of practice some of these things. And if I made a mistake, oh well, because I could, you know, either hide it, I could show it off on the outside or dun, 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 hide it on the inside of a soup bowl cozy. Uh, this I'm just totally in love with. Let's get started. For this project, you'll need one 10 inch cotton fabric for the top layer and then one 10 inch square for the bottom layer. I'm just kind of using some fun patterns. I had some, you know, remnants of fat quarters and some fat quarters that I just didn't know how to tie into other things. So I'm kind of using them. And then I'm using flannel backing. So like this is little sheep. And then with the black flannel, I think that'll be nice and toasty warm. Some coyotes. Hello, that's fun. You know, with a nice green flannel. We also need 10 inch squares of batting and I've done it different ways. Sometimes I use my heavy duty scissors. You'll see me use all the time. Sometimes I use a rotary cutter. I have found that this flannel and um, batting, that kind of anything on that, it just dulls your razor so fast. I'm gonna go ahead and use it. It might be a little rough going, but then I'm gonna just throw it away. I know this is gonna be dull. It's already dull and it already has dull spots. So I'm just gonna cut 10 inches. I think that have worked for me. I write the month um, and the year that I started using this. This one's really worn out because I've used it on a lot of um, flannels and that's why I know it's already dull. This is December 17. That means I just started using it in December. Usually, and I have like three rotary blades, but usually it'll last me three, four, five months even, depending on if I'm not using it. Like it'll last me two months of high usage and then it'll be my backup for a while. But so in between there I'll get, you know, three, four months. Um, and this one is already dulling but that again, I've really noticed a difference when I start cutting flannels and batting and all this kind of stuff. This is a super easy project to do um, on the long arm and I'm hoping it really works out. I'll let you know for sure after I get them back. I'm gonna go down up, pull my thread through Hold these to the side, line it up, hold it down for a three count, one, two, three. And then I'm going to hit start. I have it set at 75, I don't think you can see that, 75 stitches per I'm assuming minute, and I have it on the, I believe the precision, um, instead of the, whatever the other one is. Um, so anyway, I have it on this one. That's gonna keep going basically once I that'll pick up but I practiced some feathers they are not good but that's okay I practice some McTavishing apparently I do not do well with the uh, I don't I, it's just not my thing but I'm gonna work on it and then there's another one um, these you can't totally see some flames there that was his first time on the machine so Basically, I just have all these squares and I'm ready 
to, you know, cut and sew them and, and away we go. We have all of our blocks here. I am so excited about this. Um, some of them, you know, I think, I mean, not turned out good, but you know, it's all for practice. So I just really liked the way some of them turned out and doing some kind of thread play. Um, and then some of them you can't really see and, uh, and that's okay too. I'm gonna go ahead and use my heavy duty scissors and I'm just gonna cut these really close. And now we're going to mark our bowls and so then we're gonna just sew the lines and that's gonna create the actual little pucker thing. Um, so what I'm gonna do is I'm marking in the, here's my top part, fold it in half and I'm gonna just mark in this corner here. I'm using a heat erasing pen. Um, it's totally up to you what you use. I'm just gonna mark one inch up. I'm gonna kinda just have this on this corner here, two inches down, and then I'm gonna draw the line. Okay, and that is the line that I'm going to sew on. Okay, so now we are going to sew. I'm going to line up those two corners. I'm going to look at my mark that I have there and so I'm going to start really slow. Okay, there's one down. Now, you see that I have that little pucker in there. Yay, it's becoming a bowl. Now I'm gonna go ahead and line up those two corners there, and you see I have my other marks now to sew on. made a bowl. And then we just have like 12 more to go. Yay! After I sew my little beautiful bow, and look, even if I made some mistakes, you just will not see that. That's actually going to be an outside. I'm going to go ahead and trim this down. down to about a quarter inch. Clearly that is not super, you know, it's not super awesome, not super accurate. That's okay. Trim it down to about a quarter inch and then I am going to put some heat on it before I sew it together to get rid of those pin marks. So um, this one actually we're getting there. How totally adorable are these? Okay, so I pinned everything around. I have my clips to mark where I'm not gonna sew. That's gonna be where I turn it right sides out. Um, and so I just have it pinned on all my puckers. I matched up my puckers and I matched up my corners to make sure that it fit all the way around. I'm gonna start here. I left myself about a three inch hole. You certainly don't have to. I'm gonna take that off. eyeball it. And I'm going to pivot. I like to pivot on the quarter inch. Um, I do one more. Okay. I'm going to line this up. I'm going to take this pin out. So, Put in a locking stitch there. You could reverse, um, and I meant to do that at the beginning, but you do need a locking stitch. Okay, before I do anything else, I'm going to 
nip my corners because we have a lot of bulk in there. I'm trying to find my corner here. Okay. I have my opening. It still involves a little bit of wrestling, I'm not going to lie. So we're going to wrestle this to the other side crochet hook um, that I happen to have that I personally like to use for pushing my corners up. And I'm going to go ahead and get all those corners out. Then I wanted my fabric to be facing up so I'm going to kind of pull my bowl that way. I'm going to finger press my seams down. Okay, and then now what I'm going to do is I'm going to just roll under these seams and then sew that shut. I'm just going to kind of tuck that under. I am going to either pin it or clip it. I think in this instance I'm going to go ahead and clip it really sure that I kind of match up those seams and that I get everything. Now I am ready to sew across the top here, and these are so cute. Okay, I am gonna do a locking stitch at the start and stop with this. Ta-da! And look at how beautiful those bottoms turned out. That's really fun, this is so fun. I'm just gonna snip up the rest and we are done.